Hi guys, this is Mappy Girl and welcome back again to my channel. For today's video, I am going to discuss how I DIY my study permit application via SDS Stream. Before we proceed, don't forget to like and subscribe. Started. So before we proceed on the step-by-step -step process how I submit my application, I'm going to give you a short background about myself. So I am the main applicant and I don't have any dependent on me, meaning I don't have any spouse or common law partner and children. And I also submitted my application via SDS stream because I already gathered all of the main requirements and I do most of the things upfront. Also, I don't want to wait for a longer processing time, so I decided to just go via SDS application. Because SDS usually takes 20 calendar days, while regular application, it varies and it can take from two months to six months and I don't want to wait six months to get my study permit and now let's proceed on the step-by-step -step process first you need to gather all of your upfront documents upfront meaning you need to do all of the things or the requirements in advance before you submit your application so what are the upfront documents letter of admission proof of tuition payment guaranteed investment certificate IELTS test results and upfront medical certificate now first of all how to get a letter of admission so you have to do your research and look for a school and program of your choice and you have to make sure that the school is under the designated learning institution from IRCC's website because if not you will not be able to get a study permit I also suggest on applying to a program that is closely related to your educational background and or work experience but that doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot select a program that is not related to your working experience or educational background at all either way it's fine uh, as long as you can justify why you're selecting that program so second step is to apply to that school every program in school's requirements are different so just apply to that program submit all the necessary documents and just wait for your letter of admission now how to get a proof of tuition payment once you receive your letter of admission from your school they are also going to send you instructions on how you can pay your tuition fee every schools are different so it really just depends on the school so make sure to follow down instructions and make sure to save all the documents that you have like the receipt bank transactions and something like that and make sure to pay the full amount of tuition fee as well so how to get a guaranteed investment certificate first you need to open a canadian bank account under your name and transfer an amount equivalent to 10,000 canadian this will serve as your financial support each bank might have a different instructions or steps to follow on how to transfer a month on your GIC account. So you just have to do your own research on this. How to get an IELTS test result. So register and take an IELTS exam in advance before submitting your study permit application. And you must reach a minimum score of at least 6 for each category. Listening, reading, writing, and speaking. You must also reach an overall score of at least 6.0 how to get a proof of upfront medical make sure to follow the ircc's website and have your medical done only by ircc's approved panel decisions i am going to put the ircc's website below so you guys can check that out and you can see how and what's the process of doing your medical upfront so now that you gather all of your upfront documents, you are now going to create your GC account. This is where you submit your application and attach all of your requirements or the documents. So if you don't have a GC key, you need to create one. Inside GC key account, at the bottom you can see a link to start an application where it says apply to come to Canada. When you click that link, you need to select visitor visa, study, and slash or work permit button. Then you need to answer all the questions appropriately. Now, this is where everyone's situation varies. Now, the rest of the documents that you're required to submit all depends on your answers. So, the following documents that I will mention are only based on my personal experience. So, you guys need to take note of that. So, first, I have an application for study permit made outside of Canada because I am not in Canada when I applied for my study permit application and this is the form IMM1294 so you just need to fill that out next we have recent education transcript the required documents that I submitted for my application is my transcript of records and diploma I also submitted other 
things aside from my DOR and diploma. But these are all optional, okay? So I also attached a letter of recommendation from our municipality. I only attached this since I am scholar of our mayor for the entirety of my university years. And this is just a strong indication that I am a diligent student back then and I'll be the same if ever I am granted with a study permit. If you have any type of scholarship before from different organizations, you know, like the government, school, or private institutions, make sure to request a letter of recommendation as well from them because this is a good additional to your application. Another optional that I attached to my recent education transcript is my certificate of employment from my previous work, my certificate of compensation payment or tax withheld. So my previous company actually provided me these tax forms yearly before when I was still working for them and I'm glad I kept it safe. Those serve as a solid proof that I actually work for them, that I have a working experience from the field that I claimed I have. Well, if you don't have it, I think you can request it to your HR department. My company also provided me a yearly payroll summary. I only attached the latest one. The last optional document that I attach is my training certificate. So my previous company provided me training certificates before and I just attached that to my recent educational transcript as well. So I use this website combinedpdf.com to combine all of my PDF and images files into a single PDF document. By the way, you have to make sure that your file is not bigger than 4 MB or else you will not be able to upload your document. So next we have evidence of work requirement in study. So this is usually for a program that has co-op, internship, or work practicum. So my program before, it has a co-op. The difference between co-op and internship, so co-op needs to be paid. You're on a job training, but you are paid like a full-time employee. While internship, it's not usually paid, but you can be paid. So it says, you must provide a letter of curriculum from your educational institution stating that work is a necessary requirement for the completion of your studies. When I applied, I can recall having to submit a separate letter or curriculum aside from my letter of admission because it's already indicated in my LOA that my program is a co-op program. So next, we have proof of guaranteed investment certificate. Again, you need to open a Canadian bank account with 10,000 CAD. So I also attached the proof of transfers, which is basically the receipt I got from my bank. So those are the required documents that I attach on my proof of guaranteed investment certificate. And here are the other documents that I attach, which is optional. This usually indicates strong home ties to your country. So I also attach bank certificates and bank statements with six months of transaction history. I also attach credit card statements with four to six months transaction history, house and lot or business registrations only if applicable, investment certificates with proof of transaction only if available, insurance policy page with proof of payment. Next, we have proof of tuition payment, which I already discussed earlier. So your first year of tuition must be already fully paid. You also need to show the proof. You must submit something like a tuition receipt, a receipt from your bank that shows your funds have been transferred to the school you're attending. Um, proof of IELTS language test results. Next, we have letter of acceptance or admission. So you must provide the letter of acceptance you receive from the educational institution in Canada that you will be attending. And a letter of acceptance is issued by the Canadian educational institution on official letterhead and shows the exact amount of tuition fees you are required to pay, the anticipated starting and finishing dates, and the date by which you need to register. Next, we have passport. So you need to submit your info page that shows your birth date and country of origin and all of the pages with stamps, visas, and markings. So digital photo, I am just going to put the information here. What's the requirements for your digital photo? 
Next, we have Proofform Upfront Medical Exam. So again, I already put the link below from IRCC's website on how you can proceed with your Upfront Medical Exam. To submit your online application, you will need to upload the information printout sheet or the IMM 1017B Upfront Medical Report Form. Your doctor will give you one of these forms when you complete your medical exam. If you cannot get a medical exam before the deadline, to submit your application, you may submit proof that you have a scheduled appointment. Next, we have Family Information or IMM 5645 form. This form requests information about your spouse or common law partner, your parents, your children, stepchildren, and adopted children, and your brothers and sisters, including step siblings and half siblings. So this information will be become part of your immigration record and may be used to verify your personal information in future applications. Next form, we have Schedule 1 application for a temporary resident visa made outside Canada or IMM 5257. So a Schedule 1 declaration is a form with questions about your personal history. You will be asked to list information such as any affiliations with organizations and any military or government service. Last but not the least is the client information. This is where you usually attach your letter of intent. This is optional, but I strongly suggest submit one. This letter is basically a statement of purpose that mostly indicate and answer the question why and what. Why Canada? Why in that province? Why did you choose that school and that program? And what is your future plans, etc. This letter should be at least two to three pages and nothing more. I also attach at the end of this letter my NBI clearance or police clearance for all of the countries I lived in for six months or more. And that was it. So I just attach all those documents accordingly and then I paid my application. I think you need to pay $255. And then submit your application and then wait for it to be processed. I waited less than a month and then I got an approval for a study permit and then after you get that you need to print out those approval letter and then go to your nearest Canadian immigration to have your passport stamped and then I flew here in Canada and that was it guys so those are the stop as their process and the in-depth explanation of what are the documents that I submitted for my study permit application it's been two and a half years since I've been here in Canada and I already graduated. I already done my PGWP and I am currently in the process of applying for my permanent residency. Again, I apply for a study permit, just doing it by myself without any agency. So if I can, I'm pretty sure you guys can because paying for an agency to my home country at least, it usually takes around 2000 US dollars. That amount of money that can serve as your another proof of financial support or you can use that amount of money to pay your tuition fees. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna pay that much. So I just did it myself. I hope this video is really helpful for you. If you guys have any questions, suggestions, or any inquiries, just put it down below and I'll answer as much as I can. Or I can make a separate video for those. You can follow me on my Instagram. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time on my next video. Bye.